What's good, y'all? I hope you're ready for some vengeance because we're back with Ninja Kamui, and I may have found something worse than a DUI. This D stands for demon, and he's... he's... This thing just really makes you feel uneasy, but it's going to be that much more satisfying when Joe fillets him. While he's doing some fine dining, we find out that he's unalived plenty of ex-ninjas. Okay, boss. His next target just happens to be... He explains that Higan likely survived the hit by using some secret ninja arts. It's fascinating because at this point we almost care more about Higan's techniques than about Higan. I could be wrong though because this one is definitely... interested in Higan. Their goal is to uncover the secrets of Joe's technique, so Mr. Higan has got some kinky competition. What's also insane is getting to get a good look at the Reaper in action because this design is dope. Maybe it was just me, but I had to rewatch this scene a couple times because the mask made it kind of hard to tell who was talking. It was like reliving COVID. Once I figured it out, I did enjoy seeing this clash of ideals between new and old wave ninjaism. How they're breathing some culture and even history into this, which makes it feel important. And yo, I'm gonna say this was iconic. <laughs> and it gets you wondering what the Reaper's agenda for this org is. <laughs> Elsewhere, Mike continues Brazilian butting into everything, while his totally not lying co-worker and department are urgently trying to get him off this case. <laughs> this is textbook gaslighting. Mike's supervisor continues trying to convince him to stay in his lane. <laughs> It's nice to see Mike's conviction on display too, because it makes him more compelling, which I think is needed for this character. I say so because he definitely is a detective trope, but it fits because he's in a world where character tropes just feel natural. Meanwhile, Hegan's busy having some PTSD. It's fine though, this only renews his fighting spirit. And speaking of tropes, enter the unlikely pair. A quick team up? Maybe. But you know what? Nearly getting assassinated together will get you pretty tight. And it makes sense, you know? Hegan lost his family, Mike lost his career, and there seems to be a root cause. Bowser. The Kaza is Aza, and come to find out, they're almost certainly the ones leading the ninjas to them. They've practically got the government on a leash. There's just crazy suspense to wait and see who's gonna hunt the other down first. <laughs> Eventually, Mike and Joe participate in the ancient Japanese ritual of sharing an energy drink. Which is hilarious, but also, yeah, when would Joe have time to get sloppy? Now, a temporary truce is called and they have got one chance at success. It's a good dynamic, Joe's sort of the straight man to these two buffoons. Emma could come in handy parading them around in this mobile Dell computer. And Mike has both a gun and a duck, so I'd say they're all contributing. We get some more background on Aza, and they are basically omnipresent. And it's pretty neat seeing attention being brought to these real-world issues, you know, topics such as company consolidation, giving all power to just one entity. Because as we can see, what happens if that entity is corrupt? <laughs> I mean, part of Aza orientation seems like straight up brainwashing. In fact, one of their leaders blatantly admits to using people for target practice. Really paints you a clear picture of what we are dealing with. While continuing their research and hunting down Aza, the car gets ambushed. If you thought this was all exposition, nah, that's not this series' style. A fight breaks out, and unlike the diner, it's pretty sick how they have all this space to work with. The ninja world is more than just black magic and abilities, it's also gadgets and tech, like this whole place just feels so robust. And I just need this soundtrack in my blood. The choreography continues to be peak, and it even feels like they're paying homage to some famous action sequences. As you might have guessed, Hegan comes out on top and potentially even knew that they were being watched. This will also probably be one of the coldest it's cut you'll ever see. <laughs> well, that was a short-lived collaboration. So Hegan finds himself on his own again, but maybe not for long. <laughs> Y'all know what else is sick about this show besides the action? 
the pacing. It is refreshing having a series that drip feeds you the story. You know, the first episode was like, kaboom, to get your attention, and now we get the plot. A relevant one at that. Seemingly unstoppable technology like AI, corruption from above, and following your morals to your own detriment. More and more Mike and Emma are starting to grow on me, but I want to see what role they're going to play. You know, once they're done bleeding out. Ninja Kamui is far from a one-trick pony, and they have delivered once again. Seven.